This is Mr. Ling, your teacher for Biology A, and I wanted to record a quick video blog for week two here. I'll try to record these video blogs every once in a while, probably every maybe week or every other week, just to kind of go over what we're doing in class that week and maybe talk about any concepts that might be a little bit confusing or I see people might be struggling with. So, um, this one, I just wanted to first talk about the pace chart because hopefully everyone has found this by now. It's in the welcome folder. You should have gone through it already in week one. Um, but the pace chart tells you exactly where you really should be at any given time in the trimester. Okay. And remember, our trimester ends December 17th, so it goes all the way down to December 17th. Okay. Um, but right now we're in week two right here. So Last week, you did these three things, hopefully. This week, we're doing lessons two, three, and four for module one. Uh, we're learning about microscopes, and we're doing this lab here for properties of water. So after you learn about the properties of water, we're going to do a lab. And that's what I wanted to talk about today, because that's kind of an involved project. So um, also, too, you might see in your running to-do list over on the left-hand side, whenever you log in, you'll see what assignments are coming due. Um, I've been having some problems in some of my other classes, and I don't know if it's happening here as well, because I can't really see it from your side as a student. But um, I'm hoping that the due dates are matching up pretty well with the pace chart. If they're not, always go by the pace chart. If you're like looking at the to-do list going, man, there's a lot of stuff up there. Why is there so much? Come back and double check the, the, the pace chart because there should only be about three to four things every week that you're doing. I tried to keep it to three. Um, if you look at this, there's some weeks there might be four. Um, but one of these is a pretest, and those are pretty quick. So, anyway, um, let's talk about this one properties of water. So, I'm going to scroll down here into module one, foundations of biology, and go to lesson four. Okay, so first of all, you probably noticed that there are guided notes for every um, lesson, ahead of every lesson. Those are a great tool to take notes. They really kind of help you um, get what's important out of that content. However, I'm a big fan of Cornell Notes, and I think everyone should have a spiral notebook for all of their classes. Yes, I know we're virtual, but having that hard copy is good too. Um, and take your notes in your notebook. Um, the guided notes can kind of help you with that, but um, if you take Cornell notes in your notebook and you actually write them down pen to paper or pencil to paper, that does something to your brain, and you actually will remember the content better if you physically write it down rather than if you just type it out. Okay, it's just something the way our, our brains are wired, so that's a biology topic for you right there. All right, um, so just so you know, the guided notes are there. Now, properties of water. After you do this um, assignment, all right, you're going to then come to the activity at the end. And when you're going through your assignments too, make sure, I was just taking a while to load, make sure that you um, go through everything. Oh yes, and be very careful of dihydrogen monoxide. Wink, wink, ha ha. Um, <laughs> you know, those of you who haven't seen that yet, we'll, we'll get it in a moment. Um, Go through your lessons by hitting the next button here. This little icon actually will tell you how to do Cornell notes if you don't know. So that's a great little tool there. Anyway, you'll get through the lesson. You'll go to the activity, which is down here, actually, the lesson I've put actually in the, the um, module. So first, let's look at the laboratory report guidelines. This is going to tell you how to write your lab report. And we're going to be doing... Um, for this activity, we're going to be going, you're, you are going to be designing your own um, science experiment in your own kitchen using household stuff to um, investigate the properties of water. And there's a whole list of uh, objectives there, which I won't go into right now, or a list of possible experiments you can do. Um, you'll just read that in the assignment. But um, let's talk about the lab report guidelines, because this is going to come into play for any lab reports we do in this class. Now, we won't be probably coming into school for any labs. Um, I haven't decided if I might throw one at the end that might be one that we do as a class, just for fun. But um, 
for right now, everything is pretty much online or in your own kitchen. <laughs> but all of your lab reports need to be the same. So you're going to start with an objective, which is basically um, what you're looking to do with this experiment, um, the question you have that you're trying to answer, the hypothesis, um, and this is stuff you probably have learned in middle school science, but it's just a review. Um, the hypothesis should be basically your prediction, you know, um, and it should be in the in the form of if and then. So if I do this, then this will happen. And if you think about it, your variables will tie into that hypothesis because if you say, well, if I change this variable, which is your independent variable, I'm going to go over that in a minute. If I change this variable, then this variable will respond in this way. You don't have to say it like that, but your how you word it is basically going to say the same thing. So, hey, someone else just popped into here. William, how are you doing? Um, so, that is your hypothesis. Variables. I'm going to go over these in just a second because I think this is still giving some people some problems and it's, it's, um, it's difficult to remember. But first of all, with variables, make sure that the independent variable, the one that you're changing, you only pick one variable. If you, have, if you have an experiment where you're changing too many things, then you don't know really what your responding variable is responding to. Is it responding because I added more water or is it responding because I added more salt? So you really have to make sure you only change one thing. I'll come back to that. All right, materials and equipment, safety, procedure. Procedure, make sure your procedure is very specific. Write this procedure like you were giving it to a five-year-old. Okay, maybe not a five-year-old. Like you were giving it to a middle schooler and having them do the experiment safely, um, but step by step. If you just say, eh, get some stuff mixed together, see what happens, not really very specific. So let's try to be very specific there. Get a better grade that way. And there is a rubric that goes with this too, which is in the lesson, which I won't go over that now. You can look at that later. All right, observations and data. Definitely um, want to write a little paragraph kind of about what you did and what happened. This is kind of like your diary. You know, well, I did this, I changed this, and I noticed every time that I increased this, then this happened. Um, so you're not analyzing your data here. You're just giving your data. You're just telling what happened in your experiment. That's it. Calculations. Um, I won't go into that, just kind of how you figured um, your numbers. And the conclusion, this is very important. The conclusion is, um, it summarizes the lab experiment, but it also basically says what happened and it says, you know, it, this is where you're analyzing your results. Did my experiment support or disprove my hypothesis? And why, okay? That's basically what you're doing here. And this is written as a paragraph. So it's really your analysis of the experiment and what you've learned from doing it. All right. Um, and then here's some in instructions on how to include a graph. And you definitely want to have a graph in your experiment that shows your data. At least a table, but a graph is even better. If, if there's a graph and it's well done, you'll get full credit for that. All right. So I'll let you read that later. All right. So real quick, before I let you go, let's talk about variables, all right? I have created a little page over here, which this will help me explain that. So let's just go there right now. Okay, so, and you can write this down in your notes. Wink, wink. I would definitely write this down if you're still struggling with what independent and what dependent is. Um, so, dry mix is the easy way to remember it. Dry mix, and I'll explain this. So. Your independent variable <clears throat> is also known as your manipulated variable because you're manipulating it, you're changing it. So say if I was doing an experiment to see um, how um, the amount of salt changes the boiling temperature of water, okay? I'm just throwing that out there. That's I think one of the one of the possible experiments you could do. So what are we changing? I'll just let you think about that for a second. If we're, if we're seeing the amount or we're, we're doing an experiment to see how 
salinity or adding salt to boiling water affects the temperature at which it boils. Okay, just think about that for a second. All right, so hopefully you gathered that, well, we're probably gonna be changing the amount of salt to see what happens, right? So your independent variable would be the salt in that case. And <clears throat> you're manipulating the amount of salt you're adding, all right? Now, any for your graph, any manipulated or independent variable, whatever you're changing, should go on your x-axis, and I'll show you that in a second. Now, your dependent variable is also known as the responding variable because it's responding to the thing you've changed, which is the independent. So again, the dependent variable is dependent because it depends on the independent variable. This isn't gonna change unless this changes, all right? So that's why it's called the dependent variable. It depends on what you're changing. It's responding to what you're changing, okay? And you're going to, in this case, uh, with the boiling temperature of water and salt mix added, your um, dependent variable would be the temperature, right? All right, and I'm not gonna say if it's gonna go up or down. You'll just have to figure that out if you wanna do that experiment. So, uh, and this is always plotted on your y-axis, all right? So your manipulated variable, your independent variable, same thing, that, what you're changing, that goes on the x-axis, your dependent variable, what's responding, goes on the y-axis. So let's take a look at that um, real quick here. Let's turn this one off, and I'll turn this one on. All right, so <clears throat> my, my writing is horrible, but bear with me. So... In this one, um, I used a different example here. I, I used viscosity, but we're, we're going to change that actually. And, uh, oops, let's turn that off. Get away, go away, go away. Where's my pen? Where's my pen? Where's my pen? Uh, that's the one I wanted. Okay. So we're going to change this um, to um, boiling point. boiling point, all right? Not viscosity, we get rid of that. Okay, so this is boiling point, and this is, well, <clears throat> this graph wouldn't look like this. These would have to be higher numbers, um, and it may, may go up or it may go down. I don't know. We're just using this as an example. So let's say in our experiment that every time we added salt, okay, our independent variable, this is again the, the x-axis, right? And this is the y-axis. So every time we add salt, and I'm going by five milligram increments here, there's five, there's 10, there's 15, there's 20. Every time we add salt, we get these different results on our boiling temperature, okay? We'll say we're on a different planet with a lot, uh, with a lot lower pressure, because then our boiling points would drop. So um, in this experiment, every time we add salt, the boiling point goes up, all right? Now, I don't know if that actually happens or not, so don't go by this if you're doing the experiment. Um, I just drew this for something else. But your, your data points, then, you'll plot on your y-axis here. So, for example, 5 milligrams, I noticed that the boiling point was 18 degrees Celsius. Oh, and of course, always use Celsius because it's science, right? <laughs> okay. So, and again, 10... 10 milligrams salt, I ended up with about eh, maybe 25, and so on. And I get a graph that looks like this. Okay, so again, independent variable x-axis, um, dependent variable y-axis. Okay, and this is dependent, I should put here. Dependent. All right. Okay, that's all I got for you. So um, this is longer than I intended it to be, but thank you for watching. And if you have any questions on this, please leave a comment in the comment section below the video or um, give me an email or a phone call or find me on Google Hangouts. All right. Have a great day.